This is the final battle for human survival, with millions of zombies laying siege and ready to attack the last stronghold left on Earth. Even sworn enemies, Alice and Weskier, must put aside their grudges and unite against the zombies. But what the protagonists don't know is that all of this is part of Weskier's master plan. His real aim in saving Alice is to use her power to defeat Umbrella Corporation's rivals and his zombie army. The T-virus he injected into her is actually a serum-infused concoction, and using her superpowers would suppress the T-virus in her body, making her ultimate ability a one-time deal. Unfortunately, the battle at the White House is not shown in the sixth installment but only briefly explained. In the end, Weskier becomes the ultimate winner. Alice uses her superpowers to defeat the zombie army and rivals, while Leon and Ada Wong are sacrificed in battle, and Jill is brutally killed by Weskier. Only Alice narrowly escapes. The White House is left in ruins after the intense battle, hinting at how fierce the combat must have been. Alice, hiding in the bunker, struggles to climb out and starts scavenging for useful items. To her surprise, a mutant bat buried under the debris is still alive. Alice quickly runs to a car, starts the engine, and drives away just before the creature lunges at her. After a 360-degree turn, the monster catches up, its clawed tail piercing the roof and turning the jeep into a convertible. Seeing an obstacle ahead, Alice decisively speeds past it, causing the monster to crash. But she knows it's not finished yet, and after a swift drift, she turns to face it, finally putting an end to the beast. Alice continues to wander through the wreckage. Upon entering a basement, the AI Red Queen suddenly appears on screen, informing Alice that only 4,472 survivors remain on Earth. But in 48 hours, these remaining survivors will be wiped out. So, the Red Queen hopes Alice can stop this from happening by rushing to the hive in Raccoon City within 48 hours to find Umbrella's newly developed antivirus serum. The serum can be transmitted through the air, and once released, it can eliminate the T-virus and all the infected zombies, thereby saving the remaining survivors. Since the Red Queen cannot take action that would harm the Umbrella Corporation, this task must be carried out by Alice alone. Alice doesn't understand why the Red Queen would betray Umbrella, but the Red Queen assures her that all will become clear in the hive. Although Alice doesn't trust the Red Queen, she has no choice but to comply, as this is humanity's last hope. Plus, with Weskier in the hive, Alice must also confront him once and for all. Wasting no time, Alice sets off. However, not long after she leaves, she accidentally encounters a roadblock, causing her vehicle to be totaled. With no other option, she continues on foot. But soon, she finds a motorcycle under a bridge. Just as she's about to take it, she's stunned by the motorcycle's defense system. When she wakes up, she finds herself face to face with Dr. Isaacs, realizing the one she defeated earlier was only a clone. The motorcycle was a trap set by him, and Alice is thrown out of an armored vehicle to lure the zombie horde. But she quickly seizes an opportunity, kills a guard, and climbs back onto the armored vehicle. Dr. Isaac senses something is wrong and attacks Alice. After an intense fight, she subdues him, cuts off his arm to disable the motorcycle's defense system, and makes a successful escape. Under heavy gunfire, Alice gains distance from the armored vehicle and rushes to Raccoon City. The enormous crater left by the nuclear explosion is a shocking sight. But as Alice reaches a shattered building, she falls into a trap set by survivors. Waking from unconsciousness, she finds herself at their mercy but quickly overpowers them. As the standoff continues, a familiar figure suddenly appears, it's Claire, who has been missing for a long time. It turns out that after the ship was overrun, Claire was captured by Umbrella but managed to escape en route and was rescued by these survivors. Before they have a chance to catch up on old times, they found that the zombie army led by Dr. Isaacs had already entered Raccoon City. After discussion, they decided to use the building to resist the enemy. Once all the traps were set, the massive zombie army was upon them. It was a war they could not win, but they had the geographical advantage and an inexhaustible supply of gasoline. Seeing the horde in range, Alice ordered the ignited barrels of gasoline to be thrown. One armored vehicle was instantly destroyed. Dr. Isaacs, seeing the unfavorable situation, ordered a halt to the advance and commanded a survivor to be released to attract the zombies towards the building. Alice quickly halted her attack and ordered the gates to be opened to save the survivor. However, as the survivor almost reached the gate, Dr. Isaacs ordered his execution. 
Alice tried to close the gate, but Dr. Isaacs launched a rocket, breaking through. Those on the roof immediately pushed down boulders but couldn't stop the zombies from flooding into the building. Simultaneously, Isaacs fired a rocket at the roof. After the bombing, the survivors suffered heavy casualties, and the zombies below kept increasing. But luckily, Alice was prepared. She opened all the gasoline barrels, pouring out fuel like a waterfall, and lit the gasoline with a torch. The raging fire instantly consumed most of the zombies. Alice followed suit, using a cable to descend from the roof directly towards Dr. Isaac's armored vehicle. Before he could react, Alice had climbed onto the roof of the vehicle with a barrel of gasoline, poured it into the interior of the vehicle, and threw in a lit torch. Alice had just dealt with one henchman when she was ambushed by another, who was Dr. Isaac's most trusted hitman. Even Alice wasn't his match and was forced to draw her weapon, but found that Isaacs had already escaped. To divert the remaining zombies, Alice tied the injured hitman to the back of the armored vehicle to let him experience being chased by the horde. But they soon discovered two more waves of zombies were incoming, so they decided to head to the hive immediately. Only by obtaining the serum could they stop the zombie army. Unbeknownst to them, Weskier was monitoring their every move. When they reached the nuclear crater, Weskier ordered the release of terrifying hellhounds. Facing a large number of hellhounds, the group had no choice but to run for their lives. Eventually, at the cost of losing one teammate, they successfully reached the entrance to the hive. Oddly, the hellhounds suddenly stopped their pursuit, clearly something more terrifying was inside the hive. Once inside the hive, they were again confronted by the Red Queen's holographic projection, revealing the reason for her betrayal of the Umbrella Corporation. It turned out that before the virus outbreak, the executives of Umbrella had held a secret meeting. Dr. Isaacs believed that the world was gradually heading towards destruction, the main culprit being the ever-increasing population. The Earth's resources were limited, and mankind's over-exploitation led to global warming, melting polar ice caps, various natural disasters, an increasing number of incurable diseases, and even nuclear wars over resource disputes. To change all of this, Dr. Isaacs proposed a human eradication plan at the board meeting. The plan was to use the T-virus to slaughter humans on Earth, while the people of Umbrella hid in the hibernation pods in the hive. When the Earth revived, they would come out and regain control of the world. Clearly, the T-virus leakage in the hive was not an accident but a carefully designed conspiracy. Although this plan was contrary to the Red Queen's program to protect human life, she could not harm any employee of the Umbrella Corporation, so she couldn't stop Dr. Isaac's actions. But Alice could. With only 37 minutes remaining before the last human stronghold would be breached, their time was running out. Before they took action, the Red Queen whispered into Alice's earpiece that an Umbrella Corporation mole had infiltrated their group. Not wanting to alarm the infiltrator, Alice kept quiet after hearing this. The group continued to delve deeper into the hive, but after passing through a massive vent, the large exhaust fan behind them suddenly turned on. Any carelessness would result in them being sucked in. A girl couldn't hold on and was ground into a pulp, but fortunately, the fan stopped quickly. The group then came to a glowing corridor, accidentally triggering the place's mechanisms. Alice fell into a dark room filled with human corpses and horrifying monsters roaming around. Then another teammate fell in and was killed on the spot by a monster within seconds. Seeing this, Alice fired her twin guns wildly, turning the monster into a beehive. As she was catching her breath, Claire's boyfriend, Doc, suddenly appeared behind her, and they accidentally stumbled upon the infamous laser corridor. Using the hive's holographic projection map provided by the Red Queen, Alice found the entrance to the depths of the hive in the control room. Surprisingly, this was where the Umbrella Corporation's human hibernation pods were. There seemed to be thousands of them, like a biohazard version of Noah's Arkansas. Weskier, seeing that Alice had reached the depths of the base, had no choice but to prematurely open one of the hibernation pods. Emerging from it was the real Dr. Isaacs, it became clear that the Isaacs Alice had encountered earlier was a clone, unaware that he was leading the zombie horde towards the hive. Alice and Doc reached Dr. Isaacs' room after crossing a water-filled passage. Isaacs, brandishing the only vial of serum that could save the world, threatened Alice not to make a rash move. Alice reluctantly dropped her weapons, but Doc turned his gun on her. It turned out that Doc was the mole, and at that moment, Weskier also captured Claire. Alice, glancing at the objects on the table, 
began to mentally simulate various ways to defeat Dr. Isaacs. Unbeknownst to her, Isaacs had already seen through everything. Using a combat chip implanted in his brain, he had simulated the scenario countless times and effortlessly countered every move. Alice had to abandon the idea. Dr. Isaacs then revealed a truth that Alice could not accept, she was also a clone. Alice was stunned by the revelation, refusing to believe she could be a clone. However, the appearance of an old woman forced her to believe. She was the original Alice. As a child, Alice had suffered from a premature aging disease, with her few years of age resembling that of a 90-year-old woman. Her father, Dr. Marcus, had sought to cure this terminal illness and finally discovered the T-virus, capable of repairing human cells. This virus could not only cure premature aging but almost all incurable diseases. However, a young boy who had been treated with the T-virus soon exhibited side effects, turning into a bloodthirsty zombie. This was the first recorded zombie. When Dr. Marcus found out, he wanted to immediately halt the use and research of the T-virus. Still, Dr. Isaacs disagreed and had Weskier brutally kill Dr. Marcus. Isaacs later became Alice's guardian, taking over most of the company's shares to better control Umbrella. Dr. Isaacs, based on Alice's childhood appearance, created a powerful artificial intelligence system, the Red Queen, and used Alice's genes to clone her. Even with the truth before her eyes, Alice still couldn't believe it until the Red Queen's holographic projection appeared, telling her that it was an indisputable fact and displaying images of her childhood. This was why Alice could never remember her childhood, as the clone had none. The elderly Alice, in a bid to save humanity, had uploaded the secret board meaning to the Red Queen's database. The Red Queen, in an effort to prevent human extinction, had sought out Alice. Dr. Isaac, full of pride and arrogance, doesn't think three women can change anything. But he's unaware that old Alice, although unable to take on shareholder Dr. Isaac directly, still controls 50% of the company's shares. Firing Weskier, who doesn't have any shares, is as easy as pie. Weskier, having lost his position in the company, is promptly eliminated by the Red Queen. Unbelievably, the guy who survived a nuclear explosion is crushed by a steel door. Duke tries to shoot Alice, but there are no bullets in his gun. Alice, having suspected Duke, had tinkered with it earlier. Subdued by Alice, Duke is ultimately taken down by his girlfriend, Claire. Dr. Isaac escapes in the chaos, but Alice and Claire chase him down to the hibernation room. There, to prevent the Red Queen from interfering, Dr. Isaac personally takes over control of the security system. Alice and Claire catch up, but Dr. Isaac is cool as a cucumber. He instantly uses a battle chip to dodge the bullets, and the three of them brawl all the way from the hibernation room to the mainframe. Even taking turns, Alice and Claire are no match for Dr. Isaac. Claire is sent flying with a heavy punch and knocked out. Alice is kicked into a laser corridor, where Dr. Isaac activates laser weapons. With nimble moves, Alice dodges the lasers again and again. Dr. Isaac rushes into the corridor, and they grapple once more. After several rounds, Alice is left defenseless, her fingers severed by the lasers. But during the fight, she secretly slips a grenade into Dr. Isaac's bag. He senses something amiss just in time for the grenade to explode, blasting away his waist and incapacitating him. Alice takes the opportunity to grab the T-virus serum from him and pushes him to the ground. Time's running out, and she rushes to the surface in an elevator. But just as she's about to release the serum, Dr. Isaac catches up at an unbelievable speed. At the same time, clone Dr. Isaac arrives with a zombie army. Seeing his own face, the clone is stunned, unable to accept his clone identity. Seizing the opportunity, he kills the original Dr. Isaac, only to be killed by the approaching zombie horde. Seeing the situation, Alice quickly picks up the serum from the ground and smashes it just before the horde of zombies can reach her. In an instant, thousands upon thousands of zombies are wiped out. Alice, however, collapses as well, since her body contains the T-virus. But she doesn't die, as the serum only eradicates the T-virus in her body without destroying her healthy cells. The zombies, however, are a different story. Strictly speaking, they are already corpses, so the serum can only spread through natural winds, and it will take several years to kill all the zombies worldwide. Although the story of the Resident Evil movies ends here, Alice's story continues.